The Global Latin Factor Podcast. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the another episode, another capítulo. I know you say episode, episodio. However, here at the Global Latin Factor Podcast, we do more like storytell everything that we have contributed as far as Latinos. So welcome to another edition of the Global Latin Factor podcast make sure you visit the website www.theglobalatinfactor.com more information about the show and a little bit extra things including merch so before we get to our first our first latino factor of the day we just want to talk you know because we like to give you a little bit of something you know a little bit of something that you can uh a little bit of knowledge a little bit of uh uh, things we've done and dealt with our lives and uh, you know just to help you out and uh, make you make a better decision not only introducing this great Latin factor characters who uh, you know we have food and music not only that in addition things that can help you in daily life if you ever need some inspiration we got you so today we're going to talk before and again stay tuned because you're going to like what we're going to talk about today you are going to like it it's going to get hot in here, like Nelly, because we do like the hip-hop, too. We're going to be talking about taking responsibility for one's actions, right? So, I don't know if you ever had an instance where you felt like, you know, you got yourself in, in a little pickle. You got yourself in a pickle. You got yourself in, like, in a situation. And at the same time, you're like... How come so and so didn't help me or whatever? Well, that's part of taking responsibility. I got myself into a couple of pickles a couple of times, and a lot of the times when you're younger, you want to, like, you know, how come so and so didn't wasn't there, this and that or whatever. But at the end of the day, it really falls on you. It really falls on oneself. And it took me. Don't get me wrong. It took me a minute after years of work and things like that to realize. You know, it's not. It wasn't their responsibility. Yeah, they could have been there help me or did whatever but at the end of the day I'm, I'm so responsible for everything you know i'm not putting anything on anything on nobody else's plate or you know there is not their responsibility to to deal with my life so i have to be the one that owns it you know so and it takes a lot of courage and once you do so and realize there's nobody to blame but oneself not to feel pity or put oneself down but at the same time when you do that then you open up yourself for, to grow and do a whole different things, and do a whole lot of different things better than just to point fingers and say, how come you this, how come you that? No, no, right here, right here, right here. And I'm pointing at myself that he, that's the sole responsible person. And once you do that, I guarantee you it's going to take you into another level as far as like just growing, growing overall and becoming a better person for yourself. Uh, because again, I did it myself for years. I was younger, trying to put it on somebody else and this and that. How come this and that? But no, no. After a while, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, "No, homie, it was you. You put yourself to this. You did that. So you know, get right." And that's what I did, and it grew. I grew. I grew, and it's taken me, took me a little while. But if you can listen to the knowledge now and know from experience somebody that had to deal with it, then now you can take that open your ears and all of a sudden now you're in a better place and in a better position and maybe you were even younger than i was when i realized this you know what i mean so i know you know i know you know what i mean now we are getting to our global latin factor again the global latin factor if they're going to put us in a category and they're going to call us latinos and even though we got everything under the sun as far as colors we got brown, we got light skin, we got green eyes, we got curly hair, everything, Afro Latinos and all that, fine. Then we're gonna put it in your face and gonna tell you all the things that we have contributed to the world that you must have forgot. You must have forgot what we contributed as far as our culture and where we come from. All the Latino culture things that we contributed to the world, including this very important Okay, so maybe you didn't know this, right? But we're going to be talking today about chili peppers. And chili peppers are actually a fruit. Did you know that they were fruit, Carlos? You're not, right? I know you're not. 
They are in the family of the tomato, cherries, and eggplants. You know, tomatoes, still, still a fruit. Can't deny it, whether the Supreme Court says or not. <laughs> All right, chili peppers, also known as chiles, uh, chili, from the Nahuatl word chili. It's been around for about 7,000 years, and it's self-pollinated, meaning it doesn't need anything to, to pollinate. However, birds do help distribute the seeds, even though it is not needed. They can do it themselves. And did you know that birds, they, they don't, they don't if they eat through the plant, they, doesn't, they don't get the, the hot that we get. They don't. So they can just roam around, take the seeds, eat it, distribute it, and they're good. But they don't need it because they are self-pollinated. And uh, there's different thousands and thousands and thousands of chili peppers, you know. And, of course, so whenever you eat, so the reason why it feels so good, right, so whenever you eat a chili, a pepper, and your body releases endorphins, and, you know, and it starts, it kind of makes you feel good for a second, and then, of course, you know, you calm down, and then you do it again, and it just kind of makes you feel kind of good for a little bit. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because these things are, the, the peppers are designed not for mammals to eat, and yet for whatever reason, we just discovered that we can eat chili peppers. Yep. And if you didn't know where they came from, well, there's a lot of different theories of where they came from. Uh, they said they're from uh, uh, Mexico. So, of course, you know, we got supposedly originate from central eastern Mexico. There's also theories that some of them came from lowland Brazil and an area called the nuclear the nuclear area and then they got the most variety of chilies. And then there's also Bolivia. So some of them came from Bolivia as well, believe it or not. Back in the days they used to use chiles as far as like medicine. That's how they used to use it for sore muscles and things like that. And uh, that's how they used to use chili before. Black pepper and the actual chili pepper are not nothing alike. One of them, the black pepper, is actually not as old as chili peppers, and black pepper actually is from India. It's not from the Americas like like chili peppers and all the chili peppers that we have. And uh, the reason why the peppers are spicy is because of caps capsicum or capsaicin that makes it spicy, and that is not. The seed is the actual little white things inside the pepper. If you ever cut into a pepper, that. And not only that part itself, not how big or how bright it is, the actual chemical, the actual DNA that's within there that actually makes it either spicy or not. And the environment, the ground, whether there's a lot of water or not, uh, helps or actually dictates whether the chili is going to be spicy or not. A good rule of thumb is that the bigger the pepper, <laughs> the bigger the pepper, the bigger the chile, the bigger the uh, the pepper that you eat, the, the less the chances of it being less spicy are bigger if the chile is actually bigger <laughs> than if it's smaller. Because usually the one that are chiquititos, they're the ones that like got that fire. When we talk about the global Latin factor, this is what I'm referring to. This is some of the countries that have from the place in Central America all the way to the other side of the world. It's made its way. And we're talking about South Africa, again, Mexico, India, Hungary, Bhutan, Italy, Thailand, Malaysia, Korea, Sri Lanka, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Bolivia, China, Ethiopia, Ghana, Peru, Tunisia, and of course the United States. All those places have Chiles and many more and it's all because of the contribution of the Americas, the Latino area, whether it was Brazil, Mexico, Bolivia, either way, at the end of the day, this is where it came from. And it's another contribution to the world. Now, here's a quick tip, a life hack if you must. This is a life hack. So you know how you see all those. So now it's got real popular, right? They even got shows, YouTube channels of people eating hot stuff and, you know, having an interview or whatever. And they always have... They always have different things to try to help, like, kill the spice. They got, like, milk. They got almond milk. They have all this stuff, right? Okay, so it so happens to be that alcohol, hard alcohol, yes, hard alcohol like vodka and some other hard liquors, you don't, what you do is that if you on, your mouth is on fire, you take a sip and you, you kind of rinse your mouth and spit it out. 
And that will heal you. That will cure you from that spice. And did you know that, Carlos? I don't think it's real. Yeah, okay. Well, we need to try it. I'll let you try it. How about that? But you don't, you don't even have to drink the vodka. You don't have to drink the vodka or whatever. That's the key, actually, is to rinse your mouth off and spit it out. And it's scientifically proven. I'm I just guess saying. That makes sense because that's alcohol. It is alcohol. And that's the reason why it would, like, it work. It would work. So some scientists believe that, you know, people that eat peppers are healthy, healthier than people that don't eat peppers. However, you can't overdo it because there is also studies that if you eat too much peppers, then you'll start having mental decline. Did you know that? Uh, that explains a lot. That ex okay, so again, everything's it's all, everything's balanced. Like everything's about balance, right? You can't have too much of it. Like even water, you can't drink too much water because you'll die. You can't not drink enough water because you'll die. If you keep it just balanced, right? Not too much pepper, but you know, if you like some mild, then of course, help yourself to some some peppers, and then again. It's, it's great. There is even okay. So I heard that the, I heard a theory that said that the the peppers are spicy, uh, actually addictive. Do you do you feel Carlos that it'll be addictive? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. So okay. So once you bite into a pepper and you feel the experience of that pepper the first time you ever bit into it, then your body remembers that for the rest of your of your life. You know. It's kind of like if, let's say you did a, a drug or whatever, and you're always looking for the same kind of high. I say I never done hard drugs, but I'm just saying I imagine that's what they say that happens to you, right? So that's so again, it's kind of you can kind of see the argument of like what it would be like a like a addictive, or you will remember not necessarily you're addictive, but the the memories, the the experience, all that stuff. Your 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 brain retains to when it happened, and you will always remember that, even in the back of your mind. If you don't remember right now, you will. All right, remember chili peppers, chili peppers, life hack. If you your mouth is on fire, some hard liquor, some vodka or something like that, preferably vodka, rinse your mouth out, spit it out. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So before we get to it, again, remember, we always want to make sure that you're empowered, you're encouraged, and if Nobody's ever told you you could do something. I'm telling you right now, you can. You have a pulse. You have an opportunity to do something for yourself. Don't give up on it. And one thing before we get to this next great Latina to contribute, we're going to go ahead and tell you first. Okay, so there's something that you have to stay committed, and that's the commitment to a goal, right? So every single episode that you heard of somebody that did something great, they were committed to that, whether it was to be committed to go into space as the first Latina, El Nochoa, to, you know, staying committed to being everything, everything that we've done, being committed to, you know, even though your mom didn't get you your, your Nintendo and got you a computer and, and you stay committed to working on it, you know, to create, uh, capture, and recapture, and become, you know, something great, and, and something that you deal with every day, they stay committed to what they were doing, the task at hand, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of, to say when you have to be committed to the goal that you, you design. Once you have yourself something that you want to do, and you have the goal, or whatever you want to put, then you just got to stay committed to it. And again, Consistency is key. Some days you might have off and might not feel like it. Do a little bit even, the minimal. You know, sometimes if I go to the gym, I don't feel it. I still go. Maybe it's just minimal that I do, but at the end of the day, I still show up. And a lot of the times, you just got to show up. So stay committed to your goal. Once you decide, just keep working at it, keep working at it, and eventually something will give. And then... A lot of the times, things are just, you always want to seem like they're just from here to there, right, in the straight line. But it's never like that. It's always a turn here, a turn there, a zigzag here, a zigzag there. Then sometimes go back a couple steps and right back at it. But the thing is that if you have a pose, if you have a pose, if you have life, you have breath in your lungs, and you stay committed, something will give, something big. And again, if nobody told you 
if they believe in you, I don't know you from the man in the moon, like they used to say. However, I believe that all the potential that you have as a person, as a human being, that you can go ahead and contribute if you put your mind and commit to the goal that you want to put whatever it is, whatever it is, and I guarantee something will give. All right, so we're going to go mo and move on to our next Latino, our global contributor to this world. Mostly this one's um, in, in the arts, and uh, it's mostly, well, actually, she did travel the world. We're talking about Frida Kahlo, a.k.a. Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. That's her full name. She was born in July 6, 1907, and died in uh, July 13, 1954. She was 47 years old when she died. She's a painter, and she you've seen a lot probably of her portraits. You've probably seen the movie before. And, uh, you know, and I haven't seen the movie. I know about it. I know that Sama Hayek played the main character. Uh, so if you ever if you ever watched it, just let us know what you thought about it. You think that uh, the things that you might even, some of the things might we might tell you here, you might just remember, oh, yeah, I saw it in the movie. Or some of the things you'll be like, oh, man, they left out, that out of the movie, you know. So she very involved. So she had an accident uh, when she was uh, younger. A bus, uh, a car that she was in got hit and uh, by a bus or was it? Yeah, a car got, that she was on got hit by a bus and she was uh, sent to the hospital. Uh, she had to, uh, ha ever since that happened, she had to deal with, not no, actually even younger. When she was younger, she had some polio and that left her a little bit compromised. And then later on when she was older, she had an accident, and that left her hurt as well. So a lot of the time, she dealt with a lot of health issues. However, she never gave up on the things that she liked because once she got in the accident and she was bedridden for some time, uh, her dad got her some, some art supplies, and she started painting. And the first thing, one of the first things she painted was the bus, the bus itself. So a lot of the things in the arts that she did was pieces of art of the things that were going on with her life and I, and people tend to like that a lot of self portraits and things like that people tend to gravitate towards it for whatever reason and uh, she always fought for the Mexican she's Mexican uh, and she always fought for classes as far as she can tell that there was inequality and you know classes in Mexico and Mexican society she, she was always involved in that including politics uh, her father was German, and her mom was what they call it mestiza, right? So a mestizo is pretty much a, like a mixture of a European mixed with a native of Mexico, and that's what they call it mestizos, right? And uh, she grew in the what they call it now the La Casa Azul, which is the blue house translation, and she was born at the same place that she was born, which is Coyoacan, Coyoacan, Mexico. So the house is actually blue. And it's now a museum where you can go and check it out at Coyoacan. And you can see all the great art and, and history that, that she did. And she wanted to be a doctor. Uh, however, again, that, that didn't work out for her. And she moved on to different things. She was very active as far as politics, joining the Mexican Communist Party. Communist, yes, Communist Party. Back in 1927. And that's where she met uh, her husband that she mar later, later married. Well, actually, she didn't meet him. She had seen him previously before when she was way younger, 20, 22 years younger. And later on, they met down the line, Diego Rivera, and they married shortly after. And, you know, they, they were a great. So <laughs> so I see all these uh, all these memes about toxic and things like that, and, and I'm not for it. I mean, to each their own. I just don't see how y'all yeah, enjoy it. It's just like having conflict and just being just, I don't know, it's just weird to me. Anyways, but y'all can't top this dudes off. So originally they got married, and then they got divorced, but Diego Rivera actually cheated, cheated on Frida with her own sister, Cristina. <gasps> yeah, he did. And Frida, there's his, there's the little stories, I don't know how accurate they are, but supposedly she she was lesbian. She was into uh, ladies, Chavela, 
one of the ladies that uh, apparently she had a little history with and or the artist in here in the United States. And we're talking about way back in the day, he's talking about 1938, you know, when she has an exhibition here, 1939. Here in the United States, in the 1940s, a Mexicana, Frida, already had exhibitions going here in the United States. Back in the days, that's a long time, you know. We, we still going through the struggles right now. And then she had exhibitions going on even back then. She was a teacher, so she did taught at Escuela Nacional de Pintura, Escuela y Grabado, uh, a.k.a. La Esmeralda. And she was also a founding member of Seminario de Cultura Mexicana. And again, her, her health was... So the exhibition that she did in, in the United States, she was actually on a... What, what are those? Hasp hospital beds? One of those. She was on one of those. She had to be rolled into the exhibition so she could be there because she didn't want to miss it. So even though she was sick, very sick, in fact, to the point that they had to amputate one of her legs at one time, she made it all the way to the exhibition because she didn't want to miss it, and she was there. And, then, of course, again, she was very young when she left this, 47 years old, but before that, she was, she gave her contribution to the world and that's why a lot of women I feel like are like man this this woman was a fighter she went through a lot of things health issues and she never gave up to the point where she had to be rolled she had to be rolled into her exhibition but she was not going to miss it because she was committed to being there and she did that's crazy to me that's just like out of, out of this world like what are you serious? I'm telling you, these are not episodes. These are more like capitulos because we're telling you all these stories about these Latinos, about this food and these music songs that are just like a beautiful episode, a, a novella, a, the biggest novella ever we're going we're gonna to do right here at the Global Land Factor. Make sure you check out the website, newly. I can't stress it enough, thegloballandfactor.com. And uh, leave us a comment, send us an email. All the social medias are there, so you can go ahead and take a look at everything we have going on. As I mentioned before, we'd like to make sure that you uh, get a little bit of knowledge, encouragement, making sure that somebody believes in you. And I told you before, I got you. I believe in you. I don't know you, but I know you got the potential to do whatever. So do it. And uh, real quickly, so let's talk about v visual vis vi <laughs> what's it called? Visual vis visualization? Visualization. Visualization. Why can't I say some words? Some words I feel like it's so smooth, and some words will be like, what do 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 huh? Anyways, to visualize, right? So how important is it in real life? Because a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people say this and that. And this Latino that we're going to be talking about today, you're going to see how it's crazy how that works sometimes that you don't, you don't realize. So I can... I can uh, I could tell you about personal experience or something that happened to me before. So one year, a while back, I should have been more specific, right? But I did say I was going to travel to another place in the world, the other side of the world, for free. And I kept saying that, and I kept seeing it. And uh, long story, make it short, it was, I was at a company just randomly. When I moved to another position at that time. And uh, I went to visit my old manager, and we were talking, and then one of the directors came over and told him if he wanted to go to Manila, the Philippines, because I was walking, working at a call center at that time. So he said he couldn't, but he pointed at me and said, but Crispin can, and I was like, I would just, just stay there and smile, and then that, can you? He's like, yeah, I can go. I'm like, oh, okay, well, we'll get with you. And I thought it was just like, just a conversation, like, uh, whatever, just small talk. I go back to my regular position that I had working. All of a sudden, I started getting emails talking about, do you have your passport? Are you able to do this, this, and that? And I'm like, uh, I don't have a passport, but I can get it real quick. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, not even a month later, I was on my way to the Philippines. I didn't pay for nothing. The company paid for everything. And I stayed at a hotel in Manila, the Philippines, on the other side of the world, about an 18-hour flight. Plus, once you get to Japan, you have to take another flight. So it was like forever in a day, the other side of the world. I didn't pay for anything. They paid for everything. I went by myself. 
I stayed at a four-star hotel called the Sofitel. So if you're from Manila, and if some of the people that I have on social media are over there, that's how I met them. Yeah, I stayed over there and right by the water. And I went to meditate for a second. And when I meditated, I, I just, I still was trying to get the hang of it, but at the end of the day, I just did the best that I could. And I just, you know, started like, tears started pouring out of my side because I, I thought about this, right? I seen it. I literally saw this that I was gonna make it happen. And then before you know it, I was already over there. Granted, it was for work, and I should have been more specific that I wanted to travel for fun, but it happened. So I, I saw this, I, I literally saw it. I sensed it, I felt it, this, the, the water, the, the air. So I done it before, and I am saying I'm very consistent. I just know there's something that comes with it. You know what I mean? Cause I had an experience. So I know that it's possible to do so. So, you know, don't get discouraged if anybody tells you or for whatever reason it's just not working yet. You gotta put your whole entire being into it, believe it. Although I made it all the way to the other side of the world believing that, that it was possible. And I did. Hold up. Sorry, we have to take a small pause. All right, so moving on to our next Global Latin Factor, and uh, again, last to recap, just do the exercise of visualizing if you want to accomplish something, you know? If it doesn't work out immediately, then just keep at it, put more energy, and I'm pretty sure something will come out of it as well. Just, you gotta trust in the process to do so, all right? And now we're moving on to our next Latino, and this one comes from Costa Rica. He's the Costa Rican American engineer, Franklin R. Chang Diaz. Franklin R. Chang Diaz. Yes, you heard it correctly. So, Mr. Franklin Ramon Chang Diaz was born on April 5th, 1950. The gentleman's still alive. He's a Costa Rica. He's a mechanical engineer, physicist, and a NASA astronaut. He's one of the, he's also a founder of Ad Astra Rocket Company. I'm going to talk about it here, what they do. And also is a member of Cummins Board of Directors. He became a U.S. citizen in 1977. Okay, so, so his story, his capitulo goes something like this. So the man always had dreams, always had dreams about, always had dreams about being an astronaut since he was a little Chiquito, little chavalito. He always had the dream that he was going to be an astronaut, right? So, he used to, when he was small, he used to make cardboard with his brothers and sisters or cousins, whatever he had, cardboard boxes. And they used to get inside and they used to picture taking off. They even did a countdown. He used to do a countdown as little kids imagining that they were taking off into outer space. And they, they went to a different worlds and they went to fight whatever they like monsters and then to come back <laughs> before dinner he said uh to to get to whatever it is so this gentleman pictured since he was a little kid that he wanted to be an astronaut so when he was 17 he wrote a letter to nasa and told them you know i want to be an astronaut and crazy enough nasa responded back to his, his letter they underlined a piece of information when the letter he said in that the NASA program is only for U.S. citizens. So he took it as an invitation, like, you know, they're telling you what you need to do in order for you to become an astronaut, right? So what did he do? He worked hard, and uh, he felt that it was an invitation. So what did he do? He took himself to the U.S. with $50 in his pocket without even knowing English. He didn't know English and $50 in his pocket. He took himself to the U.S., for the first few months, it was rough. He was failing every class, but he was smart enough that eventually after a while, he became, he started succeeding, you know, and it started progressing. And before you know it, he just kept moving. And then before you know it, he was ahead of his class. That's wild to me, dude. The opportunity of, of this dude to say, I want to be an astronaut so much and committed to the goal and visualizing as a kid that he wanted to do that and did it. Now, he is a veteran and has been on seven space shuttle missions so he's tied he's tied for a third uh, for for the most flights with another gentleman and he's also the first 
naturalized Latino. So he's the third Latino, but he's the first naturalized Latino to become an astronaut and make it to space. Yep, that's right. You can't just, again, <laughs> you just got to trust in the process. That that's, you're committed to the goal. That's, what it, that's what's going to happen. He was born in San Jose, Costa Rica. His father is from Chinese descent, and his mother is uh, from, uh, from uh, Costa Rica. Now, his father, there was things that were happening over there in, in China called the Boxer Rebellion. It's like some kind of some kind of conflict they had over there, so that he t they took off. However, uh, he left and became uh, a native of Costa Rica, his father, and then his mother, of course, Sonia Rosa. Uh, I'm sorry, his mother was Maria Eugenia Diaz Romero, and he's one of six children, so all his brothers used to pretend that. And, uh, you know, he made it. He made it all the way to the States, and uh, he graduated from uh, MIT. That's where he got his... Uh, PhD at MIT. So this, <laughs> I just can't like, just, the, just the, the story itself, right? The fact that he didn't have $50, no English, MIT graduate, PhD, and uh, make it to space. Over, I think it was over 1,300 or 1,500 people applied for that year to make it to the, to, to the program, right? So... Out of all those people, they only selected about 17, and he was one of those 17, and that was in 1980. But he didn't make it to space until 1986. So even though he was selected in 1980, it took him a while before he actually made it. So he various missions that he did, and they're, they go into different kind of shuttle missions, the ST. S60-60-C in 1986, and then after that, the STS-34 in 89, and then 92, 94, 96, 98, 2002, and so the first mission that he ever did, he said, when they were about to take off, he was sitting down, strapping and everything, he put in all his harness, whatever, all his gear, and all he could think of, like, he felt like he'd done this before. And it took him back to his childhood memory where he used to be play pretend in a cardboard box. And he said, I, I'd done this before, you know? Like, I literally felt like I'd done this before. Because so many times in his head, he used to picture and imagine that he would do it. And, it's, you know, something like that happened to me before as far as English. Because <laughs> English is obviously not my first language. However, before I even learned English, I remember when I was when I lived in Mexico, our uncles, our tios used to take books in English, and we would pretend that we would read and, and pretend that like we knew English, right? So we would read the words in Spanish like you would read it, but of course you know that English not it's, you don't read it that way. So we used to say like one, one, doe. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a victory and eventually it came true right but it's crazy the things that you just keep just crazy things that you can imagine imagination is very powerful we just you know use it and don't give up on on the vision the, the dream that you could have just just keep at it just get with your, your entire emotions into it and put it into it and you know it will happen so when he graduated from mit graduated with a degree uh, that uh, dealt with plasma energy so his thing is that the rockets that we have right now are very inefficient and they use a lot of fuel so the rockets like huge right but eventually what makes it to the moon or whatever is like this little piece but everything else is fuel and what they're focusing on his company which is at astro rocket company is that uh they're using plasma which is like heat like beyond like the sun right as hot as the sun super hot and what he's trying to do is make the rockets more efficient to where a trip to Mars, let's say it takes seven months to make it to Mars right now with what we have, that you can make it maybe in three months or less than that to Mars with, with the rockets that they're designing at his company, you know. And he's also big into also environmental protection because he knows for sure that we eventually are going to have to take off somewhere else, you know. He, he, he told a story how, like, one of these days, one of our generation is going to be, like, they're going to be colonizing Mars. And they're going to be looking beyond the stars 
and they're gonna see Earth, and then a dad to his kids gonna tell them, "You see that right there? That's Earth. Your great grandparents came from over there." And they were like, "What?" But yeah, that is gonna be doable. But he still knows that for the moment we have to take care of what we have here and in, uh, in the environment. He was part of a role of uh, climate awareness movie which is the odyssey 2050 the movie if you want to check that out i haven't seen it myself but you know what I might give it a look to see what's going on and uh he received different awards as far as uh just the awards of, of things that he accomplished uh, that he done you know different medals and different things like that and is well deserved and especially in costa rica center's named after him so the, the the moment that he made it to the nasa program he called his parents. He said that his dad started crying. His dad started crying. He can hear clearly crying. And then he said <laughs> that his mom, like, she she took off to orbit. <laughs> she was, like, in space somewhere. And she kept telling her friends, like, and or she just kept saying, like, I am a mother of a Latino, of a, somebody from Costa Rica that's an astronaut and in space and there there's not another one like it and she was 100 percent right you know so you feel like your parents sometimes are not proud of you like for example my family like i was the first veteran first person in the military my my sister was first nurse you know so that's another in the family my other sister has her own business entrepreneur my other brother has a bachelor's degree you know so it's it's and, and i'm pretty sure my parents when they you know, go to bed or whatever they talk, you'll be like, wow. Because they came from humble beginnings. So I'm, I'm talking about my mom went all the way to the sixth grade and my dad probably about the same. And not just because they wanted to, it's because that's the life that they were given at that time and that's the options that they had. And you don't realize sometimes maybe you don't feel like your parents might be proud of you, but believe me, I'm pretty sure they are. As long as you keep doing something. And even if you made a mistake, you know, I, w <laughs> I was having a conversation with Carlos how good and bad right it's just like it's so easy to just do good and bad like just make it as simple as that but a lot of the times it's not that it's not that because we do a lot of bad things for good things for good causes right and sometimes and then sometimes we do like bad things but doesn't mark us for bad for the rest of our lives if we have many years to live who 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 are who are you who are we who am i to all of a sudden condemn that person for whatever they made mistakes and all of a sudden that's how we feel that they we should lay with them, you know? So I think we should continue to give each other, if you made a mistake, give yourself a chance and continue to progress and do something big for yourself, you know? You don't you don't know what's going to happen, take you. If you commit to your goal, if you visualize, just like the ones that we talked about, and then you just can't imagine where can you find yourself in a few years. Just do not give on the process, have faith on whatever that you are committed to, to do and i guarantee you something's gonna give this is another episode of the global latin factor podcast we appreciate you checking out every single show more information on the website the global latin factor.com and follow us on those social media if you have any out input if you have any comments if you have any corrections that you want me to make i'd be more than happy to acknowledge and make another additional show to correct anything that i I don't mind it or whatsoever. And remember, again, we're just like you. We're just people, human beings, just trying to make it in this world. We are making it in this world. We we got a poll, so we're making it happen. We're just a little spicy. We do things a, couple, a little bit different as far as the things that we do in general that you might not perceive differently, but we're going to go ahead and tell you here how we really do it in this global melting pot that it is the world. Until next time, we see you. This is, again, remember, the Global Latin Factor. Factor. Yeah.